that hook set worked right there. I wish I'd have got it on video. But playing hooky from the shop for a few minutes paid off for us. And this one warrants the net. But what I want to share with you today is uh, several ways uh, to, to get less tangles on your Euro nymphing rig. That's the, one of the number one um, problems, I would say, that new anglers face when they're learning how to Euro nymph is uh, they're spending way too much time fumbling around with their leader and their tippet and retying their setups and not enough time strictly just getting good. There you go, buddy. Strictly just getting good at the presentation itself. So I'm going to share some tips with you. Uh, I got three planned. We'll see what else comes of it. Stay tuned. We'll teach you how to stay untangled, stay efficient with your gear. Three tips on how not to get tangled. The first tip is really simple. If you're new to Euro nymphing or Heck, even if you're advanced to your nymphing, just fish one fly. Just take that heavy anchor fly, whether it's a stonefly nymph, uh, a big pheasant tail like I'm using here, crayfish, little leech, whatever it is, just fish one. A lot of the time, heck, they'll just bite one fly. They don't care. They don't even identify the other one. The next tip for you is going to be learning how to hook set properly. I see a lot of people tangled during their hook set. <laughs> And you can raise your hand if you're watching this at home and you've set the hook and thrown those flies right back into the rod tip. It turns into an absolutely horrific mess. So the next tip I'll give you is simply learning how to hook set better with kind of a helicopter style hook set. So I'm just gonna throw a drift here or a presentation. Here go, I'm gonna set the hook with a downstream stroke. So I'm dropping it in, I'm dropping it in, I'm near the bottom and Let's say something suspicious happens. I'm gonna take my rod downstream to the left, but overhand on my cast, okay? So I'm gonna do it again here, and then I'll, I'll show you a little exercise to help you understand it, okay? So many people wanna cast Euro rods or set the hook in a scissor stroke in one line. You can't do that. You're gonna throw those flies right back up at the rod tip. It's turned into a giant tangled mess. You're gonna hate it. Take your finger wherever you're sitting, and go like this. You're gonna hook set to the side like this, and you're gonna cast back in over the top. Back wide, forward tight. Back wide, forward tight. It's a helicopter hook set. And you can even practice it like this. I can take my flies right now, and I can go in a big circle. But if I go like this in a straight tomahawk or scissor stroke, I'm gonna be very, very, very sorry. So that's my next tip, is learn how to set the hook properly. The last one is casting. Casting should be done in a rounded fashion, just like the hook set, but I want you to practice that. You can use a lot of wrist in order to do it, maintaining constant pressure on, on the flies so that you and the flies are constantly in contact. If you stop and start, think about this. What happens if I took, in fact, we'll, just, we'll do this analogy. If I had a rock tied to a string and I threw that string out there and I got to the end, what would happen to that rock? It would just go boing and it would bounce back and make a whole bunch of slack in your line. If you try to stop and start with your Euro nymphing setup the way you do with your dry fly, you're gonna have a big tangled mess. Again, it's gonna be ugly. So sweeping off to the side, never stopping, not having a very uh, hard stop to your cast, Live TV, got a stick. Okay, here's another pro tip for you. Don't put the stick back where you're just fishing. Throw it off the other side so that the next guy can get it uh, in there where there is no trout. So when it comes to the cast, I don't want to stop. I'm going to stay in constant motion, throwing my fly just like that, getting a lot less tangles. So those are my three tips. Don't be afraid to fish a single fly. Practice your hook setting on the downstream side. Okay, in fact, I'll just do it again, hopefully on a fish this time. But I'm gonna drop it in, 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 in. And if I do hit the bottom, hook sets are free. They don't cost thing. I'm coming on the downstream side. Of course, I snagged bottom on that one. It's probably the bad karma for throwing stick over there in the other, the other slot. But I'm gonna set on my downstream side. That tends to hook fish better and stay tight better like this. And then I would come back this to the side here and then over the top in a constant motion without a nice stop and start. 
Okay, bonus pro tip for you, okay? So, oh, I got it off. So one one move I use to get my flies undone is I always go to the upstream side, but there's another tip about putting the rod under your arm and actually pulling it by hand. In fact, if I snag up again, you know, I'll just try to explain it. So lots of you have been snagged up. Here's a fourth tip for you. A lot of you have been snagged up and you, you pull on it with a bent rod and then all of a sudden you give it a couple of pumps and then those flies just slingshot right back into the rod tip. It's a great way to break your rod tip. It's a great way to get a big tangled mess. Instead of doing that, what I like to do, and I learned this by watching um, another angler do this, is let's just pretend I'm snagged up and it won't come off. I get a little bit of line off my reel and I get a hold of my line, okay? And if I go like this and I've got my rod under my arm, now I'm gonna try to pull it free of the rock like this right here. Usually I'm successful and it just comes undone. Okay, and it's easier on my rod. But the other thing is when it comes undone, if I need to retie, I've already got the line in my hands, okay? But I can also check for debris, which I've got some junk, some caddis pupa on my hook there. And I can take an opportunity to inspect my setup. And I've already got my rod under my arm and the flies are in my hand. Everything looks good. It's a really easy way to prevent tangles or even rod breakages and just be more efficient when you get snagged up. So a couple more tips that I didn't even see coming. So good luck with those. Stay tangle free, have fun. That's the number one thing. If you're having fun with your check nymphing, which I love, I love feeling those fish bite. You're probably gonna stick with it long enough to get good at it. And then the catching will take care of itself. So that's the difference between a two weight and a three weight. A three weight will pull that along the bottom. Yeah. You know, I mean, I felt it coming. I felt it binding, but the three weight will pick that fly up and keep it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so is a two weight? I mean, ideally, you're fishing even smaller flies than you are right now. Like, is there's that a nice pheasant fish. tail? Yeah. Hot? Get that hit report. That's a better, much better. Fish. Yeah, we're recording. Oh, did you get the hook up? Uh well we'll see. I was trying to get over <laughs> I was trying to go over this freaking rock. <laughs> Alright. And we got another whitey. We got another whitey. Should we throw this on the outtake? Throw that take. I'm not even getting my net off for this one. <laughs> oh I love it when they do that and they release. Yeah, we were just chit chat. We will throw a little outtake on there. We were just chit chatting the difference between like two weight and three weight euro rods. Eric and I were talking, and the three-weight Euro rods seem to pull the flies along the bottom better if they're heavy. And so you wind up sometimes snagging up a little bit with your two-weight, whereas a three-weight has enough tip to pop it up off the bottom. Because I've got I got two pretty heavy pertagons on there right now. So they do bind up on the bottom just a little bit. Oh, there was a bite. All right, and with that gust of wind, we're done. 